Let us confess that all we want is to know him. Can we just tell him? We've been singing very great songs since we started. And our heart is yearning to know him. To become conformed to his image. To become acquainted with him. If we're going to be used of him at all, this will be the matter. <coughs> Knowing you. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Our Father, we are grateful to you this night. We thank you for your hand that has been stretched already upon us. Thank you for the ministry of your servants that have brought us to your presence already. Thank you, God, for what you have done already. And now we have come. Speak unto us from the depth of your heart. Lord, we ask that you speak to us with simplicity speak to us with clarity speak to us with grace speak to us O oh God in your law speak and let your word mix with faith in our heart Holy Spirit we surrender to you again the choir said here's my life and that's what we have all said tonight here's our lives do whatever you want to do with it. Only make us fit for your glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Once more, I'd like to thank God for bringing us together again tonight. And particularly, those that are joining us from different parts of the world, you've been following as the Lord has granted opportunity. We are grateful to God for all of you. We are trusting that the Lord to whom we have all gathered, he will reach unto us deliberately by his mighty power and cause each one of us to become instruments of his divine supernatural shaking that will usher in the glory of God and bring in the desire of the nations in the name of Jesus Christ. In the morning, for those of us that were able to join us, we began to deliberately respond to what God began to say to us. Yesterday night, we said, God does not shake anything for no purpose. Anytime there is a supernatural shaking, it's because there's something God wants to accomplish. Supernatural shakings is not for fun. Supernatural shakings is not for entertainment. Supernatural shaking is not just to demonstrate that God is powerful. God is not in the business of showmanship. The entire earth, the entire creation, they speak of his glory. So he does not need to try to show anything. He is the Lord already. But whenever there is a divine shaking, it is because something urgently has to happen. Something serious must take place. So whenever there is a supernatural shaking, it must be for a purpose. God cannot speak 
if there is nothing to do. And so here tonight, we'll go ahead again and look furthermore. You know, yesterday we were dealing with supernatural shaking in order to rescue, in order to recover, in order to bring back that which is precious to God that is about to get lost. Whenever God comes and shakes and shakes foundations and all of that, it's because he has to recover something that is about to be lost. Yesterday we were looking at God raising a great wind, a very, very boisterous, mighty tempest. Just because Jonah was about to be lost. God's message in his life was about to be wasted. And the whole city of Nineveh were about to perish. And the man that has the solution to their problem is on his way onto Tarshish, has joined a different ship. And it doesn't matter to God even if that ship will break. It's better to lose a ship than to lose the soul. It's better to waste all the goods than to waste lives of men and women who knew not their left from their right. God will pay anything for the salvation of souls of men. Nothing is as precious to God as when souls of men are brought back to him. But in the morning, we began to discover something which we are going to keep building upon. Uh, you know why I want to start building that way? is because the shakings that we have been describing and talking about, God said, I will do it. So we don't need to worry about what God will do. But we are going to read some few scriptures tonight that connects each one of us to what God is about to do. In the morning, we started by looking at Agai again, and we saw that if this man to which God was speaking, if they were not of any consequence, there was no need for God to talk to them. If they have nothing to do to contribute to the purpose of God, there was no need for God to confront them. But because they are going to be men and women that God intends to use to carry out his divine purposes on the face of the earth, he had to focus on their lives. And even when we finish in the afternoon, I see new that we have only started to deal with an issue that is crucial, the issue of instruments for divine supernatural shaking. Instruments versus weapons in God's hand to bring a supernatural shaking in our generation. And as the choir began to sing, they were singing and crying to God. And they are saying, Lord, here's my life. Set me on your fire as your sacrifice. I pray that that song will become our songs, that all of us will be able to say, Lord, and can I say to you, even if all this congregation, if all of us here are to rush out and say, Lord, here am I, use me, we will only be entering into a divine privilege. The greatest privilege any man can have is to become an instrument in the hand of the Almighty God. And I would like to say to you before I go on reading scripture, 
Whether you are used by God or not, something will use you. Did you hear me? There is no free man anywhere all over the world. There is no man that is on his own, living for whatever he likes. No. If God, if you are not in God's hand, you are in the hand of someone else. If you are not an instrument in the hand of God, surely you are being used by someone else. And so Jesus Christ said, no man can do what? Can serve two masters. He will either choose one and let the other go, which means there are only two masters to serve in this world. Only two masters. You are either serving God or you are serving who? You are serving Mama. And if you were to understand every other man who is not in God's hand being used for the purpose of God has been unfortunately hijacked to live and expend their precious life for that which perishes. It might look as though we are making it, we are making it. I don't know where you are making it actually. Because everything you are making in this world, the Bible said, surely naked come we into this world. Is that a Bible passage? Eh? So, and it is certain that we can take nothing out. To live and serve the world is to live for nothing. At the end of all that your life is going to uh, conclude with, it will conclude with nothing. It's painful that even when a man has served, he has built mansions, he has established so many things and he has a very great house. When he dies and they are deciding where do we bury him? Where do we bury him? Do you know a discussion will be going on among the children? You know the discussion. They will say, mm, if we bury him in this compound, this house will not have second-hand value anymore. Eh? We can't sell it. And who among you want to live with the dead? So they will start thinking. They start thinking. Some say, no, no, no. We can't go and throw our father in the bush, in the cemetery. No, no, no. The other person said, be reasonable. Let's put aside sentiment. If we bury him here now, this house becomes useless. Maybe the best cancer will come and say, all right, let us take one very small corner of the, of the plot and fence it and just dig a small grave and dump him there. Fence it up so that nobody will know anything there. So if anybody wants to buy the land or buy the house, they won't even know what is there. They are taking economic decisions. That's what you live for. Supposing that man had nothing else in heaven, he has lived for nothing. And sometimes, it's so painful that a man has spent all his years Sometimes when you are building your house, you are building a big house, 
and I congratulate several of you. But I don't envy you because I don't think you are wise. So I'm building for my children. I'm building for my children. And how many of you are praying that your children will do so well in life that they will not be able to build their own house and they will only end up in your compound? Tell me, is there anybody who prays like that? Eh? You are not talking to me again. Do you know that what you are doing is an antithesis to what you believe? You are praying that your children will be established. Am I correct? Eh? You are not talking to me again. You are praying that God will give them their own houses. So for whom are you building this house? And it's a pity that you are not thinking. You know that as you are growing old, even your house is threatening you. When all your passengers have left, I hope you know that all your children are passengers. Eh? How many of you have, you now have an emptiness? Let me see your hand up. They have all gone. They have gone. Thank God for them. Abby, thank God. One is in Australia, one is in this, one is in that. May you not die suddenly. Because the trouble will be how to start bringing them. They are gone. And there are so many rooms that because you are now alone, cockroaches, cobwebs, war geckos, rodents, they are just dancing around. And they are saying, this man is a foolish man. He drove us from where we used to be. We thought it was going to be something. So it's okay. We'll come back. And sometimes you have traveled. And you want to go home. And you have a very big mansion at home. And you need to go home and say, we build this house so that when we go home, we'll get there to sleep. Can I remind you that two weeks to the time you go home, just to be able to sleep for one night, what must you do, please? You must send somebody, please go and clean the house, please get ready. So they'll be sweating, 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 packing away dust, everything so that you can sleep for one night. So gradually you tell yourself, I say, even if I go home now to clean the room before I will sleep, it's a problem, let me just... Are you a wise person? Investing all your strength, all your resources in that which has no value. But nobody will tell you that. They'll tell you that you are great. They'll tell you that you are doing so well. And the Lord Jesus told a story. Told a story in the book of Luke. Actually, the two stories are in the book of Luke. One was in the book of Luke chapter 12. He was telling the story of a man whose grant produced plentifully. I hope you remember that man. And he now asked himself, he said, look, I have got a lot. What will I do? Because I have no room, no place where to bestow my fruits. He was thinking to himself. Sometimes you don't know that when you don't have something, when you don't have money, you sleep better. When your goods increases, the trouble of what will I do now? Where will I put this? Where will I invest this? 
what will I do now? Where do I keep this? Uh, what of this one? So your phone is on your ears almost 24-7. So somebody is calling from here, somebody is calling from there. And it will look as if that's what to live for. And the Lord Jesus concluded in Luke chapter 12. Please turn to Luke 12. Luke 12. And you say, ah, where is Brother Billy coming from? That's where I'm coming from. I want to establish here tonight that instruments, instruments for supernatural shakings, they have made a choice of who to serve. They have made a choice of who to pour their lives onto. They have made a choice of where to throw their strength. And all the people that you have ever had that shook their generation for God, they made a choice. When they were making their choices, those who have no eyes for that which is eternal were mocking them. Some were pitying them. Some were saying, what a useless thing you are doing. What a useless thing you are doing. Even among those that are supposed to be believers, they were also saying the same thing. Why are you wasting your life? Is there not something better you can do? But you're just going to make choices. Choices of who to serve. Now, in that Luke chapter 12, verse 17, the Bible said, The man thought within himself, What shall I do because I have no more room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This I will do. This will I do. I will pull down my bounds and build greater. I was wondering the wisdom. I will pull down my bounds. So let me ask you, why is pulling down his bounds? Where has he kept his goods? You are not answering me at all. You know the reason why he wants to pull down his bounds? Eh? I have plenty of goods and I don't know where to keep my fruits. So this thing I will do. I will break down my bounds. Then I will build greater. <clears throat> and I'm asking, why is breaking down his bands? Where were the goods? Eh? They were somewhere. They were somewhere. If the goods were somewhere, why can they not be there? And if they will spoil, would they not have spoiled Why he is breaking down and rebuilding? And the other problem is that he's breaking down in order to rebuild on the same spot. He is only doing a routine and a cycle on the same spot. When so ever a man has not found a reason to live and he has not made a choice to live for that which is eternal, it is only a routine. It's only moving in a cycle. You may think it's, it's changing. No, 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 it's just moving around the same circle. It's not going anywhere. Because the world system is round. What does the world do? The world just rotates on its axis. It's just going round. 
all the fashions that we, we saw in the 70s that seem as if it has passed. Excuse me, what has happened now? They are rolled back again, is the word. Everything you think is new now is because you are young. Those who are older, they knew it's not new. They know that it was the old, but repackaged. And the world system has a way of making sure that you don't know. That you are just moving around, moving around, thinking that you are going somewhere but going nowhere. The stagnation of the world system is so deceptive that you are busy moving, 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 but you are not going anywhere. But it will be appearing to you as if you are going somewhere. Only after you have gone round, you say, oh, I'm back again. May the Lord deliver us from such a useless routine so that we might offer ourselves a living sacrifice that God can lay hands upon to use for something eternal. So the man said, this thing I will do, I will pull down my bands and I will build something greater and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So thou hast much goods laid off for many years. Take thy ease. <laughs> Do you know that as he was talking, he was actually sleeping as he was finishing his talking? Take thy ease. And drink. And just eat and be merry. And then he decided to sleep. Then the Bible said, But God said to him, Thou fool, this night, for you to know that it was in the night, he was just about to sleep. He had done all this calculation. My soul, you've walked so many times and you have laid goods off for many years. Take thy ease. Eat. Drink. And be merry. Then a sudden, a sudden, unexpected call came on his life. And he was called a name that nobody there calls him. You meet a big man, you say, sir, you are a fool. Ah. <laughs> He's ready to spend millions to put you in jail. Am I right? Say, he calls me a fool. I'll prove to you that it's your father, your grandfather, your grandmother that's a fool. But he who calls men fools and you have nothing to say came and called him a fool. I don't know what God calls you. I don't know what God calls you. We call you very, very wonderful names, but I don't know what God calls you. And I don't know how God is addressing you. So the Bible said, God said to him that night, this night, your soul shall be required of you. And God asked him one question that was difficult for him to answer. Then, whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Because tonight you are going. 
Tell me, whose will all this be? be? He started cracking his head. Who can take this now? Who will do this? Is it this foolish boy that he don't even know how to walk that will take all that I've done? That was the sorrow of a man who had invested nothing for heaven. And Jesus concluded that story. He says, so is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Praise the Lord. So this night, I want you to join me as we pick this choice that must be made to become a vessel in God's hand to bring an eternal result that will affect generations that will cause the purpose of God to prosper. Let's pick our scriptures together again tonight. And I would like you to quickly, quickly go with me to the book of Matthew. We are referring to this passage tonight because of where God brought us in the morning. And as the Lord has continued to guide the worship tonight, God is pointing out, yes, I need vessels. I need instruments. I need men and women that I will use to bring out my divine purpose. And I just want to pick only one tonight as an illustration of a choice that made a whole difference. We are looking at the life of Mary. Please go with me to the book of I think I want to pick it from Matthew. I want to pick it from Matthew. It's there in Mark. It's there in, in Luke. It's there everywhere, but it is in Matthew. I would like to pick it tonight. Matthew 26. Please come with me to Matthew 26. And please do not worry about the first few verses where we are told that people are sitting somewhere out to plot to kill Jesus and how they have been consulting how they are going to lay hold of him but they could not touch him because there will be an uproar among the people so let's go to verse 6 Matthew 26, verse 6. And we can only read it up to verse 13. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment. Other versions say very costly. And he poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose? is this waste. For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. And when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she has wrought what? A good work upon me. For you have the poor always with you. But me, you don't have always. 
For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Very less unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached. In the whole world, there shall also this that this woman has done be told for a memorial of her. Brothers and sisters, what choice will you make tonight that will position you for eternal memory? What choice will you make tonight that will make your life a perpetual reference in the purpose of God? What choice will you make tonight that will position your life in a space that everywhere God wants to walk, that choice will be a continuous reference point? And God comes to give every one of us opportunity to make that choice. Incidentally, almost all the Gospels reported this case. Matthew reported it in Matthew 26 we are reading. Mark reported it, I think, in Mark chapter 14. John also reported it. And I was wondering what that woman did that all the gospelers did not omit it in their records. And you know, when anything reoccurs, here, there, there, here, I used to say, Lord, but you say there is not enough space in the Bible to contain everything. Why are you repeating somebody's story four times? And it meant that there must be something in that story that God does not want anybody to miss out on. And the first thing I want you to look at it is that in this place we are told that there was this woman but in this particular place they didn't give us a clue to her name but when you go reading from all that places if you go to a map for example you will see that there was a note about who she was. And if you go from there to the book of John, I suppose maybe John 12, there was a note towards who this woman could have been. But the first thing is that she was not doing it to make a name. She wasn't making that choice so that people will know her. She was doing this only to be a service to the Lord and to pour her life out upon the Lord. So it will not be necessary for her to wear a name tag. She simply wants to do it but permit me to ask you to check one little more word they added when you read from Luke Mark 14. You know, in Matthew 26, they simply said, There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very, very precious ointment and poured it on his head 
as a sad admit. When you read it like that, it will look as if she, she just opened it and poured a little and they have kept the rest. Matthew will give it that kind of impression. But when you come to Mark, you will see what violent things she did. Please turn to Mark chapter 14. Mark 14. Are you there? Verse 3 said, And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment or spikenard, very precious. And what did she do? Please talk to me. She broke the box. She did something irreversible. She did something that cannot be reversed anymore. She broke it. Even if she wanted to regather it, nowhere to gather it again. She took a decision that is irreversible. She made a choice, what I call a final choice in her life. As if she concluded in herself, this is my final opportunity. This is my final chance. Let me do something final. And she broke the box and poured it on the Lord Jesus. God, who wants to move in our generation, I'm saying this with great, great conviction in my spirit. That there's certain things God wants to do in different situations, in different places. All that he has been waiting for is, where is a man, where is a woman that is willing to break her alabaster box for me to use? Where's that young life that is saying, Lord, I poured it out, I poured it on you. Whatever you can do with this, do with my life. And the Bible noted that there are some people, please read your Bible very well. You know, sometimes the scripture is just very overwhelming to me. And there were some that had indignation within themselves. What's the meaning of indignation? Eh? Please, mom, what would be indignation? Serious anger. Serious anger. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm wondering about? Is it their own oil? Eh? Is it their oil? Let's imagine that it was your own. And then somebody carried it and went and broke it. Are you not entitled to be angry? But she carried her own alabaster box. It was hers. She didn't borrow it. She did not, she did not borrow it. She had been keeping it, reserving it for a time like this. And then she carried it. And before anybody will advise her contrary. I'm sure that what made them to be, to be moved with great indignation is that she did not seek their counsel. Eh? If she said, I want to do something for Jesus. And the only thing I have is this precious ointment. I have been keeping it for a long time. And it seems to me as if if I don't do it now, I will lose my opportunity. I sense that this will be my final opportunity.
to do something finally for my Lord. Please, what do you cancel me to do? What will they do? They will say, yes, sister, we thank God. Don't be overzealous. Don't be overzealous. You don't need to waste things like that. Go and greet Jesus. Tell him that you love him. It's okay. But for this precious ointment, do you know the value of it? Do you know how much this thing value? Ha! Ah, how many times the world system they are saying you are too valuable to be given to Jesus. They are telling you that ah, the level at which you reach, the way you are highly educated, the way that you are doing something, you are too valuable to pour it for Jesus. Because she was not going to confer with flesh and blood. She broke it before they knew. And by the time, oh, indignation, they said, wah, 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 my God, my God. I say, what? What? what, what? <laughs> why are you annoyed? Is it yours? But I tell you why. Can I tell you why? You want me to tell you why? There are some little, little things that people do, you don't know why. Don't know why. Somebody has been in this church for 30 years, for 20 years. God has been challenging him what to do with his life. To honor Jesus is holding back. And if he has a club of mediocres who are not willing to yield their lives completely, he feels comfortable. He feels that I'm not alone. He feels that that's how to serve God. They just be doing it, talking, talking like that. But when someone else comes from behind and decide to break it at the feet of Jesus, he immediately feels condemned. Something says, this is what you have done. You are the one to have done this. But you are keeping your own. God has found another stone to replace you. So you will be annoyed. They may even accuse him. And say, hey, you are doing only than and down. Are you the only one here? Are you the only one here? Are you trying to prove that you love Jesus more than all of us? Don't listen to them. These are men that have decided not to go far with God. Suddenly they began to be annoyed. I don't know whether you know that some people, when you are lukewarm, they are happy with you. When you become violently committed to Jesus, that when they will start preaching against you. I don't mind them. It's because your life is poking their lives. It's making them uncomfortable. When they see you, Something is judging them inside. I say, see you now. You have been there for years. This is what you should have done. But you are keeping your own. And for whom are you doing this? They shouted, why this waste? Why this waste? And they were so indignant. It was so bad. Ah, I said, God. Hey. So people can be annoyed when I throw my life to your hand. So people can be so full of rage because I choose to throw my life at your feet. Let me ask you, who are the people that were so indignant? If you go and read, they account from Luke and they account from John. 
it was brother Judas Iscariot. Eh? His uncle Judas. These are their battery of the discipleship. The Lord Jesus. This is one of the inner circle, is the treasurer. In the other passage, they said, it's not because he cared for the poor, but because he used to help himself from the pause. That's why he's talking. But tonight, because I'm going to soon ask you to pray, there's going to be a supernatural shaking. And it's going to release what we have never seen before. God is going to move in a way that eyes of men will think and say, what? What is God doing now? When he has got his vessels, his instruments, those that are willing to say, have it, have my life. Take it as you want. I said, this woman did the irreversible. She broke it. She did what is unreserved. There was nothing left. She did the irreversible. She did the unreservable. Nothing to reserve. Nothing to keep back. All for Jesus. All on Jesus. All about Jesus. And the conclusion of the people is that why this waste? As far as they are concerned, she has become what? A waste. But thank God, a waste on who? On Jesus. When she was wasting her life on pornography, they didn't shout. When she was wasting her life about several men up and down in her life, nobody shouted. When she was wasting her resources on self-pleasure, it was not a problem to them. But when she was ready now, even if you regard it as a waste, to waste it on Christ Jesus, then they say, why this waste? There are still some people who think when you pour your life on Christ, when you pour your best on Christ, when you release your life completely and say, Lord, only for you, only for you, you sit in one corner and say, why this waste? Why this waste? Why this waste? But look at the Bible. Look at what Jesus began to say. They started putting value on on her on, on her ointment. They said, if this thing had been sold, it would have been sold for more than 300 pence. In another place, they said, more than 200 denarii. In modern terminology, if you have new Bibles, they would have told us how much dollar in which it would be sold. And it would have been given to the poor. Sometimes people think that philanthropy uh, the philanthropist activity is equal to pouring your life on Christ. Sometimes people think that if you are just doing uh, something that people are clapping around for you and you are dazing some poor people just to make more name for yourself, that that is better than pouring your life on the King of Kings. They will give you suggestions. Even if you want to do something, there are many other things you can do. 
what is many other things any man can do when you have not done your best for the Lord? What am I going to live for? What will I be remembered for? If I did everything else and my account with Jesus is empty, like that rich fool. So Jesus said to them, Leave I alone. And I'm happy with the word of God. Leave I alone. The day I came on this scripture, I said, Leave I alone. He reverberated in my spirit. He said, God is saying to them, leave Bile alone. <laughs> leave him alone. You say he's a waste. I mean, eh, let him be wasted for me. Just like I walked back to the campus one year and I went and met my professor that believed so much in my capacity. Because I was his best. I was his best. So I just went to Greek prof. And then another prof was sitting with him. When I greeted him, I said, welcome, sir. How are you, sir? He said, where are you coming from? I said, I'm coming from Benway State. He just looked at me and said, and he turned to his friend said, this is one of my best, best students who chose to become a waste. <laughs> ah! Look at how he dismissed my life completely. <laughs> Just like that. I thought quickly, what should I do? Because if I allow him to go scot-free with that statement, I don't know whether it will not settle on me. I needed to shake it off. So I, I, I prostrated. I said, excuse me, sir. In your eyes, it looked like a waste. For this life, you will hear about it tomorrow. There's no life given to the Lord. That's a waste. You will hear about it tomorrow, sir. You know he knew I was about to start preaching. He said, no, 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 you will start preaching to me now. You will start preaching to me now. Let's forget it. Well, I, I hope everything is fine. He said, everything is fine. So he dismissed me, and I also dismissed him. But you know what God did? Several years, I was invited now as a preacher to the campus, to the chapel, the highly revered chapel, where all my professors and all the big, big who is who in the campus, where they are. And look at my professor and other colleagues. They are all sitting there. And then the they, they called me forward to preach. And I decided not to look at their faces so that they would not intimidate me. I just said, let us rise up and please bow your head as we talk to the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Creator of heaven and earth, the one that made you and put you where you are. Will you please stand up and honor the Lord this moment? Let's pray. Do they have alternative? They all stood up. They all stood up. Then the word of God came. And as the word of God was coming, I was preaching, I was coming. The whole, the whole church became quiet. Quiet. And I knew that the Holy Spirit is doing something now. And I dare not miss that opportunity. I was going to draw the sword. When I was about to finish, I said, Now, you may have been in this place for many years. You have come to the climax of your career, but there's an emptiness in your heart. And only Jesus can fill that vacuum. You know it, you know it. 
They call you proud, they call you this, they call you that. But there is an unanswered question in your heart. What is all of this? And Jesus stands there and said, come to me. And then they started coming. The church was scattered that day. As people were coming, coming. You don't give altar call like that. I said, don't just stand up, please come forward. Come to this altar. And you are going to be on your knees. And people were on their knees crying. And my prophets, they are crying. And when I finished, and I, they led them out to be cancelled, prayed with them. So when all of those is finished, so I now walked to my prof. I was going to prostrate for him. He said, no, 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 man of God. Ah, hey, how can God be prostrating for ordinary me like this? No, 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 no. I said, no. I say you are my you are my teacher. I say no, you have become my teacher now. I've been a prophet, but I know nothing. If God did not touch me today, my life is finished. Ah. He cried again. I didn't want to remind him what he said before. Because there was no need. He has now joined me. He's now ready to go and do Bible study, whatever I tell him to do. It's not a waste. So when he said, leave her alone. If you are ever going to make this choice, you must be ready to let people leave you alone. Every hold on your life must give way. Otherwise, you become their puppet. Those who are holding you back from making this right choice, what do they want to make you? Where are they going with you? What promise do they have for you? Some will say, oh, look, we are behind you, we are for you, we are going to stand by you. And then one year after, they are dead. What's the meaning of that? So Jesus said, leave her alone. And why are you troubling her? She has wrought a good work on me. For you have the poor with you always. Whensoever you will, you may do them good. But me, you don't have me always. You will not always have him. You will not always have this opportunity. A time is going to come when you will want to. There will be no space. And there were some colleagues of Sister Mary that were keeping their own box, their own oil. They were keeping it. When Mary went and poured his own, and Jesus said, she has anointed me for my burial. Even that was unreasonable. How can you anoint a man who has not died for burial? Does that make sense? Eh? Is it not a corpse? When you don't want it to be smelly, that you do what? You perfume, you perfume. How can you perfume a man who has not died? So even that was looking foolish. How can you, how can you anoint a man for death? They did not know what Jesus was saying. They did not see what Mary saw. Three days after Jesus Christ had been buried, these other sisters now gathered their own ointment. They want to pour it on the dead. Friends, if you will serve him, serve him now. If it will be useful now. Don't come and do a useless death service when we don't need it again. 
By the time they got there, they woke there very early in the morning. They are going to anoint a dead body. Only to get there, they did it, they find an empty tomb. Excuse me, where was their oil now? Where was their ointment now? It's forever in their bag. Forever in their bag. I think if I meet some of them, I'd say, what of that oil? They say, what am I going to do with it again? I was preserving it for the dead. But it's not dead, it's alive. And now it does not need our perfume again. Mary has poured his own, her perfume. And that's, the master, that's what the master took to the grave. That's what the master took to heaven. <laughs> I don't know whether you know that. When she poured that perfume, for all the days, that was the smell. When the soldier men were, were dividing his cloth, if it was smelling bad, you think they would do that? It was a very good smell, so they were dividing it too. Mary's anointing. May God help us. Tonight, before we rise in prayer, what will be your choice? What will you choose to do? The Bible says she has done what she could. She has done what she could. She has wrought a good work upon me. In verse 8 of Mark chapter 40, they said, she has done what she could. God is not asking you to do what you cannot do. What God is demanding from you is actually what you can do. You can give your life to Jesus. You can lay down your life and say, Lord, take my life and use it for your glory. She has come ahead of time to anoint my body for the burying. But if Jesus talked at verse 8 and did not say what he said, I would have thought of what purpose. But thank God, he said, Verily I say unto you, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached, where? Throughout the whole world, this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her wherever this gospel shall be preached. Throughout the whole world, this also that she has done will also be spoken of for a memorial of her. I don't know how to put that. I pray that God will guide you tonight to do something. Something that you can do. Something that is in your capacity to let go before God. To make a choice of where to throw your life. And the Bible said, as Jesus declare that. I think everybody kept quiet. But up to today, what she did has continued to be spoken as a memorial of her all over throughout the world. I'm not sure Sister Mary thought what she was doing was going to have that kind of that kind of magnitude of effect. I thought she was just responding and said, what can I render? What can I give this, my Lord? I don't know whether I will see him again. What is the most precious thing in my life? What is the most costly thing I have? 
Let me give it to him. And I want to give it to him in an irreversible manner. I want to give it to him without any reservation. And I want to give it to him once and for all. And I want to give it to him even if this is my final opportunity. Let me give it to him finally. Let me not think that maybe I will reserve some and maybe at another time, at another time, I may not have another time. Let me do it finally. And when she did, it became actually the final service that anybody could do to the Lord. And from that point, everything else, everything else was taking place, everything else until the cross. From that point, from the cross to the grave, from the grave eh, to the sky, Everything till he went off. I'm telling you that when Jesus appeared before the Father, the smell of Mary's perfume. Eh? Are you with me? I don't know whether you are. May I just read my Bible simple? I'm not. Because when Judas, I mean a brother Thomas, said, I will not, I will not believe until I see him. I must put my hand in his side. I must put my hand where they pierced him. Which means that same body that had that perfume. Brother Thomas did what? Came and touched it. He said, ah! He said, oh yeah, look at this. Look at this. Then the man broke down and said, my Lord, my God. All of that, Mary's perfume is still there. What will you do that will become a testimony? That will become a speaking memorial? What will my life be that will be a testimonial to the glory of God? So those that shook that God will use to shake nations, they have taken a decision. They have made a choice. They have decided who I will serve. Even tonight, I'm not yet getting to the point of what will God do with them. I've not yet reached the point of all the places that God wants to manifest himself by our lives. Whether business, whether politics, whether anything, where God wants to shake. The first thing he's asking is that, who can I use? Who shall I send? Who will go for us? We're going to stop here to pray tonight. But permit me to remind you that no man can serve two masters. He will either choose one and let the other go. Or he will neglect this and hold to that. Jesus was emphatic. You cannot serve God and serve mammon at the same time. They don't go together. As I stop here tonight so that we can pray for what remains of our time, I will again be waiting at the feet of the Lord here. And I will be trusting that the Holy Spirit is speaking very clearly to you from row to row. The Spirit is knocking and asking one basic question. What, what will you do? What will be your choice? This woman had done what she could. 
She has wrought a good work on me. Leave her alone, please. Don't trouble her. And this that she has done, wherever this gospel shall be preached all over and throughout the world, this that she has done will be spoken as a memorial of her. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Let's all pray together. I just want to take these two minutes just to pray. Don't talk to someone else. Don't look at anyone else. Just pray first. I wish you can talk to God and say, I'm hearing you. The choir began when we began to worship God. They say, you are all I want. They say, take my life, whatever you want to do with it. We ended with a hymn, say, knowing you is the best. It's all I want. Is all that I will ever need. But singing it and not making it a choice is not good enough. Presenting it as a special number when it has not been your choice is not correct and yet for God to shake the nations this private choice must be made Father please walk in our midst tonight let it be on record oh God that you gave us a privilege you gave us an opportunity. You extended to us a space to be relevant in what you are doing. So that wherever the gospel will be preached all over the world, throughout the world, we may also have a space in what you are doing. This night, Lord, I ask that you please move amigos and let your voice be heard. Silence all those who are struggling with our decisions. Lord, silence those who are unnecessarily indignant, full of indignation because they thought we are going to waste away. Those who felt our lives would be nothing and would be a waste and they are so annoyed that we wanted to take a step. Please, Lord, will you please stop them? But they can't stop us. This woman broke our box. We're going to break our own as well. Spirit of God, please walk in this meeting now. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you. Now, I want you now to put action to your own personal choice, your personal decision. I want you now to personally, we're going to take that song 
We have been singing it, but I still feel we must sing it this night again. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my way be lost in love. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Draw me nearer, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious leading side. Before we now do the song two more times, if as the Spirit of God is walking armies, and God is saying, what are you doing holding back? What are you doing not giving me space? And the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm giving you a privilege today to bring this life and let me do whatever I want to do with it. All those who I used to shake their own generation, they made a choice like this. Some of them were girls. Some of them were... People thought they had great opportunities. But they knew that it is in God's hand that that life is useful. As we now take this song two times, I will just ask you to walk before the Lord and say, Lord, take it. We take this song only two times. And as we are singing, those that want to take a step, those who want to stand before him, those who want to lift up their hands and say, Lord, We were singing about what Paul said in the morning. He said, all things that were gained to me, I can't them but loss. Because I want to know him. And I sense the Lord is walking here now. A great shaking, a great awakening, a supernatural shaking is coming. But these are precursor to it. I'm praying that God will have a way here tonight. As we take the song two times, only two times, because we don't have time tonight to do more than that. All those that are desiring to say, Lord, I've heard you again and again. Let my life be poured at your feet. Whatever he now chooses to do with it, let him be the one who decides it. Whatever he wants to do with it. Whether I want to send you to the marketplace, it will no longer be you going there. It will be him. He wants to send you somewhere else. It will be him. Only so that his glory will feed this land. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power. Let my soul look up with a step as old. And my will, let it be lost in yours. Let my will be buried in your will. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Nearer. God bless you now. Good and
singing, those that are standing before him, those that are saying, yes, Lord, tonight is okay. Let, let it be done. Let it be on record that I came. It looks as if I'm breaking something. Let it be, oh God, have your way with me. And I'd like you to please come forward. And as we are going to do that in prayer, we just stand together before God and say, Lord, and if it's all of us that you said, ah, I'm hearing God, then just stand on your feet and stretch forth your own two hands and say, Lord, here am I. And those that are feeling that, let me take a step, let me, let me not be hidden within the crowd, just walk out. The song now, the last time. Consecrate me now to thy service. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Thank you. 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 God bless you. Quick, I wait for you for another few minutes. Oh, 
Oh yes, Lord. So to the cross where Thou art Draw me nearer. All other consideration, all that others are talking about, they must not hold me back. Thank you, friend. Just move fast. Oh my God. Robo Shina Baba. Thank you, sister. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. We're waiting for you to get in there. Draw me Nyara. Oh, Nyara. Oh, yes, Nyara. Thank you, John. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To the cross where 